And though I know the world of real emotion has surrounded me, I won't give in to it. Hey! There's little Karibo here, coming to you live from one of the various islands that I apparently inhabit from time to time. Used to be Duelist Kingdom, now I'm on Academy Island. Apparently if I'm gonna make a show, it has to originate from some sort of island. I'm just gonna do an entire series where I review every episode of Gilligan's Island and lost, because it has to fit that island theme. Otherwise, I can't make a show about it. Hey guys, it's me again. I'm here with another episode of Little Karibo Watches GX, which if you've not been paying attention, is a YouTube show where I talk about watching a show. And then you get to talk about how you watch the show down there in the comments. Are the comments still down there? Because every time I gesture, in this YouTube window. I'm pointing in the wrong direction, apparently. Are they up there now? They're down there. Okay, yeah, you talk about it down there. I'm always like, read the description, and people are like, no, the description's over there now. And I'm like, is it? Is it there? Is it there? But yes, this is the series where I watch an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, ideally every week. Sometimes life gets away from me. I was a bit sick last week, but I, so I couldn't do it. But anyway, I'm here now. Everything's right with the world, because I'm watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX dub episode 12 which is called... Formula for Success. My formula for success was relying on my iPhone to give me the information. Pretty solid formula, honestly. And a lot of people have been very excited for me to get to this one because, spoiler alert, it's a bastion heavy episode. So the episode really should have been called a formula for being a posh head. And I actually made a promise in the early episodes of this series that I would eat a Karibo card on camera if Bastion would get any character development within 10 episodes. And he didn't. It's episode 12. So there. I don't gotta eat shit. So for those of you who are on the edge of their seats waiting to see if that would transpire, it didn't. If there's one thing you tune into these videos for, it's satisfaction like that. I'm excited to watch this episode with you the way most people are excited to log on to the internet every day and find out what the f**k's gone wrong this time. Because that's been a whole waking nightmare we've all been experiencing. So with that in mind, let's delve deeply into the waking nightmare that is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX episode 12, a formula for success. A formula for failure, if you ask me. Because it's Bastion and ooh. Ooh, I hate me that bastion. The episode starts off uh, on a baseball field, which is already a strange development. Because this is uh, not only Dual Academy, but this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. And at no other point has anyone expressed any interest in any activity outside of card games. So who was the genius in charge of developing a baseball program for this school? Do you think there's people who much like Latin we're like, we don't need baseball taught in this school, it's a dead sport. There ain't no holograms, and there also aren't any people almost dying as a result of those holograms being used. So it ain't a real sport, in my opinion. As the camera lowers down onto the baseball field, we hear a crowd of people cheering for Jaden. And then when the camera gets closer, we see it's only Cyrus who's really cheering for him. So way to misrepresent the amount of support that Jaden Yuki gets from his friends in the baseball league. GX. Jaden and Cyrus are apparently still suffering the after effects of the Paradox Brothers duel. Jay, keep your eye on the ball. That could be tough. After all, get it cause they're rhyming. Jaden is up to bat, I think. I don't know how baseball works. And he makes some predictions as to who is going to score. He'll score, then he'll score, and then I'll score. Doubtful. Bastion rushes onto the baseball field and explains that he's late because he was deep into some attack point quantum mechanics and he lost track of time because of all the attack point quantum mechanics that he was doing. Attack point quantum mechanics! I know it's early days into the Bastion themed episode, but can I get really angry already? Is that allowed? Because I'm already pissed at this guy. Let me just read to you what quantum mechanics are defined as. The branch of mechanics that deals with the mathematical description of the motion and interaction of subatomic particles, incorporating the qu- <laughs> What? Incorporating the concepts of quantization, quanti- quantas- qu Stuff of energy, wave particle duality, the uncertainty principle, and the correspondence principle. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is, Bastion, you're a 
fucking tosser. You were not deep into some attack point quantum mechanics. You were deep into looking up your own asshole is what you were doing. Just admit it. Mm, sorry, I couldn't make the baseball game. I was balls deep into some defense point chaos theory. That's basically what you just said, you big wanker. You have so many options of what you can say as to why you didn't show up on time for baseball practice. Like, I don't know, I was playing card games. But no, quantum f***ing mechanics. F*** off. The opposing team asks Bastion if he can throw. Yeah, he's perfectly capable of throwing. Throwing my world into a state of lunacy. Ooh, I hate that, Bastion. Anyway, the opposing team switches out their pitcher with Bastion. So now Bastion is going to throw a baseball at Jaden. That's the extent of my baseball knowledge, guys. Jaden is unperturbed by Bastion's newfound role as guy who is throwing a ball at him. And he tells Bastion, this ain't no written exam. And Bastion says, trust me, I've done all the calculations. Yeah, I bet you f***ing have. Bastion says, get ready for some heat, Jaden, because this next throw's coming in red hot. That would be the implication of heat. And speaking of things that are red hot, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme! And speaking of things that are not red hot, this shot of Bastion's crotch as he throws the baseball at Jaden. I just, I never thought I'd see quite this much of Bastion's crotch in my life. I expected to see some of his crotch, obviously, but not quite this much. And Bastion throws the baseball at Jaden and they project the image of a tiger onto the baseball as it's flying toward him like it's Bastion's spirit animal. Ah uh, yes, nothing quite says the spirit of a tiger quite like attack point quantum mechanics. Bastion gets three strikes on Jaden and he's f***ing out. He's gone. He's out of here. So much for being bloody king of games, Jaden, am I right? I'm sure Jaden would point out that this ain't a card game so it doesn't count. Except, king of games quite clearly states in its title that it is just nondescript games in general. King of them. You can't not be king of baseball. You can't be sh** at one game and go around calling yourself, I am the new king of games. But that's what he's gonna do, isn't it? Cause he's f***ing Jaden. Jaden says, nice. The baseball game continues and Cyrus gets all up in Jaden's face. Jaden, what's going on? You got two outs and now you've walked the last three batters. <laughs> Am I supposed to know the rules to both card games and baseball in order to enjoy this show? Because I barely understand the former. It turns out that Jaden has been intentionally walking all of these baseball players so that he can throw a ball at Bastion. Jaden Yuki there proving that the last two episodes have taught him nothing about being a team f***ing player. Bastion goes up to the plate. Is that what you call it? Is it a plate? It doesn't look like a plate. I don't eat off of it. I don't understand baseball. Anyway, Bastion does go up to the plate. And Bastion tells Jaden to give him his best shot, as he doesn't want to hear any excuses after Bastion wallops it out of the ballpark. Yes, he does say wallops. Shouldn't you be off somewhere playing cricket, you big bastard? Jaden throws the ball, and much like before with Bastion, we get a good look at Jaden's crutch. Just a really nice angled shot of his winged Karibos there. And then a f***ing dragon is projected onto the ball when Jaden throws it. F*** off! Jaden's spirit animal is not a in dragon. No. He's not the dragon of Duel Academy. You can't get that going. All the Yakuza references in the world aren't gonna save you from this, Jaden. Professor Crowler is shown walking nearby when suddenly and out of nowhere he is attacked by John Cena. Paradox Brothers couldn't beat Jaden. Chaz couldn't beat Jaden. I need to find someone who can beat me. Jaden and Cyrus rush over to help Crowler, but then freak out when they realize that it's Crowler. Cause you know, from a distance, you can't tell, I guess. Crowler isn't too happy either. <laughs> you! Well, of course! Who else could cause such intense pain? I'm starting to believe more and more that Crowler is the real protagonist of this show. In that I empathize with him more than any of the other characters in this show. Although maybe that says more about me than it does about this show. Cyrus looks at Crowler and says, Now that's keeping your eye on the ball. This isn't the time for puns! Crowler could be in serious pain! He might need to go to the hospital! You think if Cyrus was a first responder at a bombing incident, He'd, he'd go up to one of the victims and be like, Okay, don't blow up at me now. This is like Cyrus finding somebody locked in someone's basement who's been malnourished and underfed for months. And he goes up to him and he's like, Are you feeling a bit peckish? That's how poor 
your attitude is here, Cyrus. Bastion rushes over and insists that it was his fault as he was the one who hit the ball. We would have also accepted because I am Bastion. Crowler has other plans, however, and he stands up and tells Bastion that he's been looking for a reason to get new contacts for ages. And he adds that he's also been looking for a new protege. And then he delivers what is easily the most erotic line delivery of the series so far. It's time you started consorting with those more your class, don't you think? It's time you start consorting with me. Mmm, I'd be happy to make love to you, Professor Crowler. But first I have to figure out these attack point quantum mechanics. That's what I'm gonna use next time I wanna turn down a woman. Or a man. Or... I say both genders, but really neither of them are asking. But you can feel free to use it in any situation where you want to turn someone down, when you want to let them down lightly. You could bring up the attack point quantum mechanics that you're busy working on. Back in class, which is where they never taught us this, Chaz demands a foot rub and an iced tea. And much to Chaz's surprise, his Chazmen refuse his Chazmans. That's what demands are called in Chaz world. He's trying to get things Chazzed up and his friends are like, no, actually, we're going to Chaz things down a little bit. Another student comes over and says, what are you doing sat here? This isn't your seat. And Chaz is like, what are you talking about? I've always sat here. And the guy says, not anymore. Now you got to go sit with the the Slifer Reds and the raw Yellows. Chaz is so upset that he yells at Professor Crowler in class to tell this guy that he's meant to be sat with the Obelisk Blues. And Crowler says, actually, you haven't belonged there since you lost in your duel against Jaden. And then Crowler declares that Bastion is gonna duel Chaz tomorrow, and if Bastion wins, then the two of them have to switch dorms. Hold on now, is this school's rotary system just a game of f***ing musical chairs? I swear, every single week someone's either being threatened with being kicked out of the school or they're being told that they have to switch to a different dorm altogether. Does anyone stay in the same dorm for longer than a week here? Chaz is so upset that he might have to wear a different color uniform and or be compared to Bastion that he runs out of the classroom in disgust and all the other kids in class laugh at him derisively. And the class laughs so hard at him that they all form a single multi-headed organism that chases Chaz out of the classroom and down the corridor outside. What is that? What is it? What, what? Okay, first of all, in the tag duel, the classmates were all some sort of weird ragdoll creatures, and now they're this? Some sort of weird, many-headed monstrosity? What is that? This whole school is like something out of Silent Hill at times. Chaz continues to be bothered by all of this. I won't be a rock! Yeah, f the sun. What's it ever done for us anyway? Outside Duel Academy, Jaden, Cyrus, and Bastion are all discussing the baseball game from earlier. Maybe it wasn't a foul, Bastion. Jaden, over the center field fence usually isn't. Oh yeah, <laughs> what? Bastion holds up his baseball bat and shows it to them, before proceeding to viciously and repeatedly bash Jaden's skull in with it. Oh, sorry, that was just a wonderful dream I had last night. He just shows it to them. Bastion explains that he plays baseball the way that he duels, with formulas. And then he shows them that he's got all manner of formulas written all over his baseball bat. <laughs> what? You've written baseball-related formulas all over your baseball bat. How is that helpful? Because presumably there's a huge number of variables involved with the throwing of a baseball at someone. So there must be like... Hundreds of formulas that could apply to any given situation in baseball at any given time. But no, he's got like two or three formulas written on there and he's like, this, this solves everything. No, it clearly doesn't. Because first of all, I assume when you are batting in baseball, you're not allowed to stand there reading your bat for a good five minutes before you take a swing. I assume there's no allowance for that sort of thing. So what are you doing with formulas all over your baseball bat, Bastion? That's not gonna help anybody. Bastion says that he believes that math, statistics, and geometry play a role in everything we do in everyday life. That is true, but also writing down formulas does not mean that you're able to solve any situation that arises. If that were the case, then I could just write a formula for great sex on my and I would be sorted for life. Do you think Bastion wrote a formula for great sex on his dick? Because I am starting to suspect as much. He's like, mmm, carry the Y and oh no, I've run out of space on my dick. 
Shark! Mmm, I'm Bastion. Ooh, I hate that Bastion! Shockingly, Jaden admits that he has never looked at life this way. Okay, show of hands, who is surprised? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. None of you. Cyrus asks Bastion, So, do you have a formula for everything, Bastion? Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I've never been more convinced in my life that an anime character is a serial killer. Even including the actual serial killer that was revealed in the anime series Erased. Bastion is infinitely more likely to be a serial killer than that guy. Do you have a bunch of dead bodies melting in a bathtub in your kitchen, Bastion? <laughs> Are you the one responsible for all the missing students over at the abandoned dorm, Bastion? <laughs> Legitimately unnerving stuff. Then Bastion leads Jaden and Cyrus into his dorm room and leads us, the audience, into a waking nightmare that is his existence. Cause you see, there's formulas all over the walls. Written all over his dorm room, just everywhere. It's just wall to wall formulas. Why? This is the sort of thing if I walked into that room, I would immediately reach for my phone and start dialing 911. Jaden and Cyrus don't actually have that option though, unfortunately, because they're stuck on an island with this guy, which was Bastion's plan all along. And here's really the biggest problem I have with all of this. The most disturbing thing to me about these formulas is that he's not even made good use of the space. He's got an entire dorm room's worth of canvas to write on, okay? But he's managed to write maybe half a dozen formulas. Like, uh, um, uh, there's, uh, there's not that many formulas written on his walls. Because he's written them all in, like, massive handwriting. Just really shoddy use of his space. There's, like, one formula on the ceiling and that's it. A really committed serial killer could probably fit a good, like, uh, several thousand formulas in that room, but he's just, he's, he's not even tried. Bastion explains what all these formulas are for, and shockingly, it doesn't involve murder. That area is for traps. That's for spell cards. And that's, well, you get the idea. No, I fucking don't! Bastion says that he's memorized most of these formulas already. Well, there is only about 10 of them, so. And he pulls out a mop and broom and says, do you mind helping? You just know he's gonna use that mop and broom to mop up Jaden and Cyrus's remains when he's finished with them. I'm very worried for their safety. And then we get a little montage of Jaden, Cyrus, and Bastion all painting over the formulas on the walls and the ceiling. And we see Jaden is painting the ceiling, so he turns around and he says, hey guys, check it out, I'm Michelangelo. And regardless of whether he meant the artist or the Ninja Turtle, both of them are spinning in their graves right now. Of course, Michelangelo the Ninja Turtle was already spinning in his grave, because he's breakdancing, because he's a party dude. But now he's doing it a little more shamefully. And then Jaden falls off the ladder and dumps a bunch of white paint into Cyrus's face, who then responds by chucking a bucket of paint at Jaden, but it misses and hits Bastion right in his gob, right in his posh head. And then Jaden laughs at all this, so Bastion just chucks a bunch of paint in his face for good measure. I'm sure I could make a very base and vulgar joke about three boys shooting a bunch of white fluids into each other's faces in their dorm room. But I am better than that. Which is why I won't be making that joke in this video. I'll be saving it for Twitter. Later, Bastion takes Jaden and Cyrus to the raw yellow cafeteria and treats them to some of their food. And while Jaden and Cyrus are complaining about the sh** quality of the food they get in the Slifer Red dorm, Bastion says, oh, I'm sure we don't have it much better. And then he drops a f***ing lobster in front of them. And when they look closer at it, they see that it's covered in formulas from head to toe. Because that's how Bastion figures out which food is the best by writing formulas all over it. Jaden says the closest thing they get to lobster in the Slifer Red Dorm is Pharaoh the Cat's breath, which is just very offensive. Meow. If you like how it smells in front, Jaden, you should really check out the back. Bra. Cyrus asks Bastion what he was talking to Professor Crowler about earlier, and Bastion explains that Crowler wants him to try out for Obelisk Blue. And Jaden and Cyrus both encourage him, saying, Oh man, you'll be a shoe in You're so great. And while Jaden and Cyrus proceed to stuff their faces with formula-covered lobster, Bastion just sort of regards them, looking very disheartened. Presumably because he's wondering what their bodies would look like covered in equations. Meanwhile, st over at the Obelisk Blue dorm, Chaz is in a video conference call with his two older brothers. The Princeton family, as they're so-called, I suppose. And it seems that Chaz's older brothers have a plan 
to uh, dominate the world. So let's hear what that is. Just think of it, little bro. The world of politics, finance, and duel monsters. If we control them all, then we will control the entire world. Politics, finance, and duel monsters. What? I feel like the military would probably have something to say about that. Having said that, we have established in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX universe that the military is kind of at the beck and call of the card game industry. Their only role now is to transport booster packs to and from various locations. So yeah, maybe the Princeton brothers know what they're talking about. Chaz's older brothers tell him he has to hold up his end of the bargain, which apparently is to do really well at Duel Monsters. So wait, your plan for world domination is to be good at things. Alright. I don't know how you're gonna be good at things without various formulas covering every item in your vicinity, but... Best of luck. After the video call finishes, Chaz gets up and in frustration goes to the window and looks outside and sees Jaden, Cyrus and Bastion. And he thinks to himself, how am I gonna succeed with lucky punks like these walking around? Ah yes, the first thing I think of when I look at Jaden, Cyrus and Bastion as a group is what a bunch of lucky punks. Ooh, I hate that Bastion! Chaz realizes that these guys are headed to the Slifer Red Dorm, which means that Bastion's dorm room is completely unprotected. Personally, I still wouldn't want to go near it. It's clearly a serial killer's death trap. But hey, Chaz obviously has other priorities. We cut to the Slifer Red Dorm, where Jaden and Bastion are both fast asleep next to each other. You're welcome, shippers. And Chumley is terrified that a raw yellow is in their dorm, because in his words, Bastion Bastion might wake up and make fun of them or duel them. Yes, if there's anything that I would be worried about while attending a card game school, it would be, first of all, getting challenged to a card game, and second of all, being made fun of by the other people attending a school for card games. Also, can you imagine Bastion just waking up and starting to immediately just tear into Chumley? Bastion just wakes up and is like, uh, you're fat. Because that is the sort of thing he is likely to do. Under the cover of darkness, Chaz sneakily chazzes it up into the raw yellow dorm where he finds Bastion's dorm room, which is room number 468A. The A standing for a posh head. The next morning, Jaden, Cyrus, and Bastion are all woken by the lady from the card shack knocking on their door and she tells them that she was unloading some new card stock at the docks when she saw a bunch of trading cards just floating in the ocean and it's like hang on why was your immediate thought to rush over to Jaden and tell him about it is he the only one in this school that would have a vested interest in somebody's cards being tossed in the water. I mean, she obviously didn't know whose cards they were, because she went straight to the Slifer Red dorm. Has Jaden told this woman that if she ever sees a bunch of cards floating in the water, that he gets dibs on them or something? Jaden, Cyrus, and Bastion rush to the pier, where they do indeed see that Bastion's cards are all floating in the water, like they've been dumped there unceremoniously. And Bastion concludes that, yeah, these are his cards. And he also says that it's his own fault, because that deck was in the desk that he'd pushed outside the room while they were painting. Well, in that case, it's obviously your fault, Bastion. I mean, pushing a desk outside of your room and putting a deck inside it? Of course someone's gonna reach inside there and take the deck and throw it in the water. Duh! Jaden says that only someone who wants Bastion to fail would do this. Okay, show of hands again, who is likely to want Bastion to fail? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All of you. And then Jaden's like, oh man, Bastion, what are you gonna do? Your duel's in less than an hour. Oh man. Quick, Bastion, you have to start drawing a formula all over your own naked body as fast as possible. That's the only way to get out of this. Bastion, Jaden, and Cyrus all storm into the duel arena where Chaz and Crowler are waiting. And Jaden, Sherlock Holmes, Yuki immediately figures out that Chaz was the one who dumped Bastion's cards. Get your elementary on. Chaz, of course, did denies that he did this, but then Alexis and Zane walk in, and Alexis is like, no, actually, I saw you throwing all those cards into the water. Why didn't you fucking do anything, Alexis? Why didn't you say, hey, stop throwing those cards in the water? Where I am. And then Alexis says, I wouldn't normally snitch on him, but you don't mess with someone's deck. What? That means that if Chaz had committed a crime that didn't involve someone's deck, she would have just not said anything. Alexis is likely sitting on a ton of evidence pointing to Bastion being a serial killer, 
but because it doesn't involve Dex, she's fine with it. Alexis there, likely covering up for several murders. Chaz claims that he could have just been throwing away his own cards, and Jaden counters his logic expertly. I guess Bastion and I just have similar decks, that's all. Liar! Oh. I just like how immediate Jaden was there, like, liar! Oh, The Phantom Menace is a really good bit, liar! Can you imagine Jaden playing L.A. Noir and getting, like, two sentences into an interrogation and then just being like, liar! You know, guys, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is actually very clearly a superior show to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime in every way. Liar! Bastion says, well, let's just have the duel anyway. And Jaden says, how are you gonna do that without a deck? And then Bastion says, you saw all my formulas, right? Well, they were each for a different one of my decks. Actually, you said that they were for trap and spell cards, but never mind, who's paying attention? Bastion then rips open his jacket and reveals that he has six deck boxes hiding under there at all times. Yes, you all thought that I was really buff, but it turns out that I just like trading cards a lot. You know, Bastion tried pulling this stunt in an airport once and he ended up getting tackled by about six different security agents. Bastion then activates his dual disc in the poshest, shittest, smuggiest way possible. Look at that posh shit head smile. Ooh, I hate that Bastion. You Bastion. Bastion tells Chaz that he's just a problem to be solved, a theorem to be cracked, demonstrating once again that Bastion has completely disassociated from reality and that he has started seeing the people around him as a series of digits that he needs to solve. Total serial killer stuff, man. Chaz summons his Chazthonian soldier. It's actually a Chithonian soldier, but let's call it Chastonian soldier. Which is like a dude with a sword and a shield. And Bastion responds to this by summoning his Hydrogeddon, or as Bastion calls it, Rise, Hydrogeddon! Because as we all know, British people pronounce things daft like that. When that new Michael Bay movie came out, we all went to the theatre and said, One ticket to Armageddon, please. And Hydrogeddon is like some sort of giant sh water monster. I'm not shitting you. That is clearly a dinosaur made out of sh water. I'm sure it's supposed to be mud, but given my association with Bastion being a posh sh head, it fits the theme. Hydrogeddon attacks Chithonian soldier with Hydro Gust, which is just the sh water monster puking sh water on to Chithonian soldier. It's lovely stuff. A lot of fluids going in people's faces today. And of course, Chithonian Soldier's special ability means that whenever Bastion destroys one of them, he loses the same number of life points that Chaz does, making it so that things are Chazzed up in equal measure. Bastion says that his Hydrageddon monster also has a special ability, which means that every time it destroys a monster, he gets to summon another one from his deck. So now Bastion has two water monsters, and his battle phase continues, so he chooses to have his water monster spew more water onto shit Chaz. Sorry, the word shit is gonna be said a lot during this duel. Chaz chastivates Call of the Haunted, which allows him to Chaz up any monster from his GY. And he brings out is Chithonian Soldier, because it's the only one that's available. And then he chastivates a spell card called Inferno Reckless Summon, which allows both of them to summon from their hand, deck, or GY monsters that have the exact same number of stars as the monsters they already have on the field, which you can imagine allows for a number of creative and inventive monsters to be brought out onto the field. But no, they just summon the same monsters on both sides. This duel is just a roller coaster of emotions and surprises and shit water. So now Chith has three Chazonian soldiers, and Bastion has three Hydrogedons. Why don't you Hydro get on with it? Chaz activates the equip spell Chithonian Alliance, which causes the equipped monster to gain 800 attack for every monster with the same name on the field. That brings his attack point total to, well, you're the math nerd. You can figure it out. Unfortunately for Bastion, he can't figure it out, because none of the formulas that he memorized painstakingly were a simple addition. So Chaz attacks one of the Hydrogedons and brings Bastion's life points down to 1600. Meanwhile, Bastion reacts to the new Roseanne series on ABC. Good show, but it will be short-lived. Then Bastion summons Oxygedon, which is a giant water pterodactyl and not an aggressive treatment for your acne. And Bastion uses his two monsters to attack the two weaker Chithonian soldiers, which obviously is going to lower the attack points of the Chithonian soldier with the equipped spell. But apparently nobody told Cyrus this. Why does Bastion keep attacking? He's only hurting himself. Ah, he's fine. Huh? Bastion's playing smart. 
Bastion is all hunched over his dual disc like a slippery randy old man who is in a chess match with another slippery randy old man who are both also competing to see who can be the slipperiest and the randiest. Chaz sacrifices his last Chithonian soldier to summon Infernal Incinerator, one of his stronger monsters. So of course Bastion's only recourse to defeat this monster is to start drawing formulas all over the duel arena. And obviously this stadium-like structure is significantly bigger than his dorm room, so he's able to write about 20 formulas on it this time. Hang on, Chaz, I'm going to paint a giant number one on this wall, and then I'll be with you. One? Infernal Incinerator's attack increases by 200 for every monster that Bastion has on the field. And Chaz tries to have Infernal Incinerator attack with Firestorm Blast, which obviously pales in comparison to Axe Slash Bash. Axe Slash Bash! But then Bastion activates his Amorphic Barrier Trap card, which ends Chaz's battle phase if Bastion has three or more monsters on his side of the field. And then Bastion takes his turn and summons Water Dragon, which if you've been following along up until this point is a dragon made out of water. And since Bastion's monster number decreased, now Chaz's monster's attack has decreased. And Chaz says it doesn't matter because his monster still has a higher attack than Water Dragon, which of course allows Bastion to deliver his most badass line of the series so far. Better double check your work because I've already done all the math. I did say most badass. I didn't mean to imply that it would be badass, definitively. Jaden responds to this by saying, oh my god, Bastion had all of this plan from the very start? F*** you, Jaden, that is not what he said. He said he had done math. You're the one adding things up wrong now, Jaden. Bastion would be ashamed of your lack of formulaic expertise. Bastion explains that when Water Dragon is on the field, all pyro or fire type monsters have their attack reduced to zero. And this is represented by a massive tidal wave coming and wiping out his monster's attack points. Funnily enough, this could also represent Bastion, as being in his presence is much like having a bunch of cold water dumped onto you. Bastion then has Water Dragon attack with Titan Blast, which sounds to me like some sort of Thanos-themed energy drink. And the Water Dragon's attack apparently floods the entire duel arena with holographic water. Chaz raises his head from out of the holographic water, which apparently has the same consistency as real water, and Bastion congratulates him on a duel well fought. But Chaz is still not having any of it, saying that Bastion only won because he got lucky. And Bastion says that Chaz would have lost this duel one way or another because Bastion is just that prepared. And then he says, you can deny it all you want, but it won't stop it from being true, just like you denied throwing my cards in the water. And then he holds up a Vorse Raider card that he fished out of the ocean and he shows everyone that it has a formula on it. Hang on, Bastion. Are you telling me that you've defaced these Yu-Gi-Oh cards? That should be an expulsion right there. He shouldn't be getting into Obelisk Blue. He should be getting kicked out on the street. You shouldn't even be able to use that card in a legal duel anymore. You've defaced children's trading cards, Bastion. That's almost worse than the fact that you're a serial killer. Of course, Alexis knew about all of this in the first place, but she wasn't gonna tell anybody because it didn't affect anybody else's decks. Good luck using that Vorse Raider in Nationals, Bastion. Crowler attempts to congratulate Bastion. Congratulations and welcome to Obelisk Blue. No. Liar! Bastion explains that he doesn't want to join Obelisk Blue until he becomes the number one student in the freshman class. And right now he believes that that student is Jaden fucking Yuki. Okay, what bogus formula did you use to come to that conclusion, Bastion? Jaden asks Bastion if they can duel right now, as he is sporting a massive card game hard on. But Bastion says that he has a lot of work to do before they duel. Many formulas to write, theorems to solve, equations to balance. You're a good duelist, Jaden, and I plan to be ready. Victims to murder, you know. Bastion tells Jaden to expect their duel to end like their baseball game. You know, the one where Bastion struck Jaden out? And Jaden's like, think again, Bastion. Baseball's a pastime, but dueling's my life. Ironically, in both situations, Jaden is never getting to third base. And then Jaden and Bastion end the episode by having this dramatic stare down that is so over the top that it becomes the most ludicrous thing you've ever seen. Watch. <laughs> I 
Ah yes, nothing quite says high stakes like... Ha! And that, mercifully, is the end of the first Bastion Misawa-based episode. My... Gosh, that was a doozy. I was, I was so on board for that episode, like completely separating myself from the fact that I, ooh, hates that bastion. I was so into this. Mostly because it wasn't so steeped in the card game aspect of it. It was actually showing these guys socializing and how they get along together and, and I need more of that. I need more about these guys as people rather than as duelists because I, I haven't the foggiest idea how to uh, sympathize with them in the card game situation. But seeing them just being friends and getting along and helping each other, that's neat. And yeah, Bastion is kind of an absurd character, but it really lends itself to this series because everything seems really absurd, so he fits in just fine. Putting all those formulas all over the walls, so it really bothered me that he just, he didn't write in smaller letters. He could have fit so many formulas on there. And what is he doing? Is he just lying awake at night, staring at the ceiling, thinking about these formulas and trying to memorize them? Is that his equivalent of counting sheep? Oh my god. He's a character, isn't he, that Bastion? The one thing this show does have going for it that the old Yu-Gi-Oh! show kind of didn't is that it's giving these characters their own episodes to explore who they are and why they're doing the things they're doing and, you know, what, what it makes them do and how, it, how they act as a result. Whereas before it was just like, ah, Tristan is Tristan and he's the friend and he's, he's with us, you know? At least I know a bit more about Bastion than I did about Tristan Taylor. I guess. Not that I really wanted to know the guy that well, but at least I do. What did you think? What do you think the formula is for understanding Yu-Gi-Oh! GX? Because I feel like we all need to know it and it must be out there somewhere if life is based on math, statistics, and geometry, as Bastion says. And make sure you comment on this video in the form of a formula or an equation, because otherwise Bastion won't understand what you're trying to say. Before I go, I have to give a massive uh, Bastion Misawa formula-sized shout-out to all of our Patreon pledges. You guys are a massive help. You guys, uh, your support means the world to us. I always want to make sure I take time to acknowledge the help that you give us because, honestly, I would not be doing this without you. I would not be doing this without every single one of you. I, I, I really do appreciate it. So please, when you see your name going across the screen, that means that I'm saying thank you so much to each of you individually. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, I have to go study up on some attack point quantum mechanics. Mmm, see you later. So, do you have a formula for everything, Bastion? <laughs>